This tutorial is on uh, compound interest, and, and compound interest is a calculation where um, so there's some kind of an investment where interest is calculated and is added to the previous amount, and then interest is earned in the next period, not just in the original principal, but also on any previously calculated or added in interest. So that's why it's called compounded, because you actually earn interest on interest, and not just the interest, but of course the original principal as well. So this is the formula, A equals P times 1 plus I to the N, N. Uh, A is the accumulated amount, the amount the investment is worth at a certain point in time after so a certain amount of interest has been calculated and added in. Uh, P is the original principal or the amount of money invested. A A I is the interest rate per compounding period and it's always written as a decimal. And the way you calculate I is you take the annual interest rate or the interest rate per annum. Uh, annum is used because it's actually, I believe, Latin for, an, for annual or year. Uh, you take the annual interest rate and divide it by the number of compounding periods per year, and we're going to take a look at that in the example on the next page. And N is the number of compounding periods. The exponent is the number of compounding periods. And you find the number of compounding periods by, number, by multiplying the number of compounding periods per year, whether it's uh, monthly, 12 times a year, annual once, uh, semi-annual twice, etc. But you multiply that by the number of years to get the number of compounding periods. So that's what the formula looks like. On this next page, we're going to take a look at calculating the, uh, the missing values of our compounding periods per year, the I and the N value. So in the first one here, we're given that there's a, a rate per year of 7% and it's compounded annually. Now annually means there's one compounding period per year. Uh, in this second one, I'm going to go undo the columns here. Uh, quarterly means four times a year. There's four quarters in a whole, so there's four quarters in a year. And semi-annually means twice a year. Now, the way you calculate the rate per compounding period, I'm going to leave these as percentages. Uh, for the calculation, we use them as a decimal. But the, uh, the way we calculate the uh, uh, rate per compounding period is we take the uh, rate per annum and divide it by the number of compounding periods per year. So in the first one is 7% per annum, but there's only one compounding period in a year, so it'll be just 7%. So we actually have 7 divided by 1 is 7, but I didn't bother to show the divide by 1 here. The second one is 8% per annum, but it's compounded 4 times a year. So we will go 8 divided by 4 to give us its 2% per compounding period. The last one, it's 6% uh, per year, but it's compounded twice a year, so we will go 6 divided by 2, so that one would be 3% per compounding period. So you're earning 3% compound, 3% interest per every compounding or semi-annual period. Now the way we get the number of, of uh, compounding periods is you multiply the number of uh, compounding periods in a year by the number of years. So the first one is compounded once a year for two years, so 1 times 2 would be 2. There'd just be two uh, compounding periods Semi, or annual compounding periods in two years. The next one, uh, there's four compounding periods in each year and there's five years. So four times five would be 20. So there's 20 quarterly compounding periods in five years. Four for each of the five years. And the last one, semi-annual means twice a year for, for eight years. So there should be 16 periods altogether. So two times eight would be 16. There's 16 half-year periods, basically, in eight years. That's what that says. And example number two on the final page here, we're asked to use that formula to calculate the value of each investment. So the first one has $1,800 invested at 8% per annum, compounded semi-annually for five years. So we're going to write out all the values of the formula. So P would be the $1,800. To calculate I, we take the 8%, uh, and now I need it for the formula, so I'm going to write it as a decimal. So 8% is 0 0.08, and we're dividing it by 2 because semi-annually is twice a year. So 0 0.08 divided by 2 would be 0 0.04. Now, uh, the next is the N value. Uh, for 5 years, and there's 2, and two semi-annual periods in each year, so 2 times 5 would be 10. So in this... Um, investment, uh, the interest is going to be calculated basically 20 times, and that's why it's compound. You actually earn interest on your interest. So here's the formula. A equals P times 1 plus I to the N, so we fill in the values. Again, P was 1800, 
the interest rate per period is 0 .00, 0 .04, sorry, that's 4%, and there are 20 compounding periods. Now, if we add this together, 1 plus 0 .04 is 1.04. Some people don't even bother write this line down because 1 plus 0 .04 is automatically 1.04. So, uh, now we need our calculator here. So we would go 1800 times 1 1.04 to the power of 20. And so that's the amount. Now, some people might like to do this. Some people like to put the uh, 1.04 in brackets. Of course, it gives you exactly the same thing. So $3,944, and this would round to 2 cents. Uh, the 1 is plus 5, so the 2 does not round up. So that's where we get the $3,944.02. Uh, second one B here, $5,000 is invested at 6% per annum, compounded quarterly for seven years. So first of all, P would be the 5,000. The uh, interest rate per compounding period, we take 6%, 0 0.06 and divided by four. So let me bring the calculator back, 0 0.06 divided by four. So you get, it's 1.5%, so uh, 0 0.15. And uh, N is, there's uh, four quarterly periods in a year for seven years, so four times seven will be 28. So we'll bring back our formula here, A equals P times one plus I to the N, and substitute in uh, 5,000 for P, 0 0.015 for I, and 28 for N, and of course this will be 1.015. So we'll bring the calculator back one more time. And so 5,000 times 1.015 to the power of 28. And so that's going to be worth $7,586.11. That one also did not round up. So that's the that's the power of compound interest. If you can get interest at a reasonable value, and the, the more frequently it's compounded, the higher your amount gets to be. Um, for example, I'll, I'll show you this one here. So if we did the same calculation, let's say it wasn't compounded quarterly, it was. let's say it was compounded monthly. I'm going to show you this here before we leave. So if you take the 6%, actually let me clear this, you can see the whole thing, 0 0.06. So let's say it was divided by, let's say it's compounded uh, for, uh, 12 times a year. Monthly is 12 times a year. So this is going to be 0.05. Uh, now, in seven years, uh, there's uh, 12 monthly periods in each of those years, so the end value would be 12 times 7. I want to show you that this is actually going to be bigger. So, um, the, the 5,000 is the same, so 0 0.05 is the I, and the 84 is the N here. So, it's going to be 5,000 times, and I'll write 1 plus the point zero zero five. I could have just done 1.005 if I wanted to. To the power of 84 is 84 compounding periods. So it was $7,601. So notice that, and I guess we could actually show the amount, 7601 and 85 cents. I want to show you the difference here. Minus 7586.11. So this investment would actually earn $15.74 extra just if you could get the compounding qu uh, monthly instead of quarterly. Just by getting it compounded more frequently, you actually earn more. So um, the, the more frequently you can get it compounded for the same interest rate, the more it's going to earn for you. So basically, that's uh, some calculations for compound interest, and that's the end of the tutorial.